This is Chicago Avenue in Oak Park with the Frank Lloyd Wright House we've just passed. We're coming to Kenilworth Avenue. Down the avenue here are many homes by Wright and other prairie architects. But the point here is to show you that we'll come up just a second on his home and studio, very well-known place, and then to show the different, the distance to the house we're looking at today. Here is the Frank Lloyd Wright home and studio, and then it's really just another block to this group of bootleg houses. There are four. Two are known to be by Wright, and two are believed to be by Wright. This first red one here is a bootleg. The second one is not known for sure. The third one we're going into is a bootleg, and the fourth is not known for sure. This is Nan Bird, the agent who is representing this house, and I'm going to get you inside soon because it's cold. But <laughs> Thank tell you. Me briefly, Nan, I've talked a little bit about the bootleg houses, but what's the significance of this home? This was his first commission. And he used construction of this to fund his departure from the Sullivan. That's correct. He had borrowed $5,000 from Sullivan to build his home, which is down the block, home and studio, and he needed to pay that back prior to leaving Sullivan. So what he did was he took the Gale commissions, both Thomas and Walter. The red one. The red one, and paid the money back. Oh, wow. All right, so we We're going to go into the parlor room first, and these are the windows um, in the octagonal shape that is repetitive of Frank Lloyd Wright. Um, these are the largest prairie windows in both Gale houses um, in the world. They're original, and if you look at them, in you can see the wavy cross um, crosses in them and the bubbles, and they're all hand blown. Yeah, I can see some of the bubbles. Can you see some of the bubbles? The fireplace is really quite interesting. It was not here when, when Rick bought the house, and he wanted to make sure that it was restored exactly correctly. So there was a door here. This is the one non-original window in the structure. And there was a door here outside to an octagonal porch with a porch up above. What happened was in the early 1900s, there was a picture taken of a woman in the corner reading. And the reflection of the door showed the fireplace. So oh, yeah. he was able to replace the fireplace exactly the way it was oh, that's amazing. from Thomas Gale. The dining room actually is designed so that you can sit in here and talk across the room. And it's designed so that when you whisper, you can hear the person across the table, which is real interesting. Um, the so bead now, corners. Is it a porch off to the left here? That's correct. Through this window right here, that was originally a door. And, let's walk and it was a porch. These are the corner beats on all the walls. And you can see how they tie in right here to the baseboard. The thing that Rick added to this is a wonderful half bath here. Oh, just off the dining room. Just off the dining room, which makes it a little bit more modern. New window. And a storage hey, area. Look at this porch out back. This, this porch is not original. It is not. Rick it built is. it in what we thought was the appropriate style. Okay. It is octagonal, and it probably mimicked the shape of the well, octagonal porch on the other sure. side. So what we're looking at right now, this the exterior of the kitchen, that's yes. all addition. The, it is. It's built on a new foundation, and the master bedroom bath is upstairs. <laughs> so we created a modern space off of the old Frank Lloyd Wright. The garage is new as well. Oh, it is? It's brand new, and it is very, very high. There's an area in there where there's a stairway, and you can actually stand up in that area up above. Oh, great. I love this porch. It's, it, I mean, you can just see in this, flowing out to the Oh, uh, and, and it's, it, it's wonderful. I wish it was, it, there's a lot of snow outside, but in the spring and summer, it's a wonderful space. This would have been the back porch uh, and the storage area for cooling of vegetables, ice box, 
delivery. What we tried to do is Rick tried to do is preserve some of the integrity. You can see the old planters sink from England. Um, all of this is brought in. It probably is similar to what they would have had in that period of time. I mean, all the windows. I mean, that it's, alone is just terrific. This feels like the living room. Yeah. This cabinetry is exceptional. It is quarter sawn oak. It's custom made and it is completely solid. And it was made for this house because it's probably what was here. Come on in here and see what it was like to be Thomas Gale looking oh God, out on the land. Wow. So that his desk was phenomenal. positioned here. He looked out into the trees wow. and this is the, the people sat across and this is probably where he did most of his work and um, collected taxes and um, did the things that were necessary. And so now it's, it's not the master, the master is farther back. But That's this correct. This would be a bedroom with these great windows. And again, the color red. And the wall. Right. right. Wow. This is our master bedroom. And this, I can imagine waking up in the morning and looking out at this beautiful area and all of the sun. And all these now trees. remembering that now frankly. Again, we're in new space, right? This is old space. This is old space. The new so space starts over there. Bathroom. Oh, I got you. Yeah. So the thing that is so wonderful about this is that you know that, that Frank Lloyd Wright was so interested in octagonal, especially in these two houses. So this window is one, two, three, four, five, six. Right. I asked you to remember two windows, okay. one downstairs yeah. and one next door. We actually found them in a storage area in the attic. What had happened was there was a frame in the wall here yeah. and here. The windows were never installed because by then Frank Lloyd Wright had learned that the roof and the shedding of the water, if you put a window next to that roof, right. it would leak. So in this particular case, it was one of those great occasions when a really wonderful man designed windows for here and here to make it octagonal right. and in the field made a change. Oh, that's wonderful. I want to point out the light in this room. This, this Let me get out of your way. Cold, bitter winter day is a wonderful room to be in. This is the addition, and he matched. Rick matched all the windows so that they would um, be exactly the same. Right. This is the original tub, so you can see how small it was. It was in the in the bath. Um, it's amazing. all it's redone. Wow. It was actually the one that was chosen. All of the the piping had to be custom made and done. You can sure. see the shutoff valves because there wasn't really anything that fit. Well, we should point out that th while this is the master bath tub and it's a nice relic, we also have something brand new to shower in. You know, the other thing is. One thing I'd always want to do in the morning is come into a warm area. Yeah. So Rick has radiant heat in the floor, and this is the timer. So you can set it for 5 o'clock if you're oh, a right. 6 o'clock rising person sure. and walk into a toasty, toasty room, hop into a fabulous shower. And take a look out these windows. Right. Big trees. Yeah. Oh, great.